Hello, my name is Hayley and today I'm going to show you how to make a science pocketbook. Here's one I made earlier. I've got the front cover decorated, but let me show you inside where you'll see the pockets. And in these pockets you can place anything you like. In mine, this book's all about trees, so I've put a leaf rubbing from a horse chestnut tree. And can you see the pockets I've made here, quite simply, from some folded paper. I turn the page, you'll see more pockets with more rubbings. And finally, on the back page, in the back pocket, I've got some bark rubbings I made outside. So let me show you how to make this simple science pocketbook, and you can try making your own. You need some simple resources. First of all, you're going to need some pieces of paper to make the pockets to go inside your book. I'm using some A3 paper, but you can use bigger or smaller sheets depending on what you have. The bigger the paper you use, the bigger your pocketbook. So the first thing to do is think about making the pockets themselves. And for that, we're going to have to think about how deep you want the pockets to be. On my sheet of paper here, which is A3 sized, I've just made my pockets about nine centimetres in depth. So on here I've marked on a line about nine centimetres from the bottom. I've also put a line down the centre of my sheet of paper. I'm going to fold it down through the centre to make my pages. So the first job to do is to fold up the pockets. And to do that I'm just going to fold the paper along the line and fold accurately along the line to make the pockets. You'll have more time than me, so make sure your folding is nice and accurate. Next thing to do is to fold the paper in half, remembering you want the pockets to be accessible from your book. So at that point, we're going to fold the paper in half. Again, take your time over this to get your folding accurate and straight. And there I've got my first double page of my pocket book. Each of these has got one pocket on each side to put things into, and the same on the other side. I'm going to make a few of these, so when you've got a few of those ready, you can join me for the next section. So, I've made, you can see here, three folded pages for my pocket book. Each page has got two pockets, one on each side. I've got a total of six pockets here. You can make more pages for your pocketbook if you need them. So at that point, I'm gonna make sure that, uh, before I move on to getting my book's cover in place, I'm gonna make sure my pockets are all in the right place. So at this edge, I've got the cut or open edges of my pocket. Can you see that I've got on every one of those a pocket just here? So I've got those at the open edge all together. And this side has the folded edge of each of my pages. One, two, and three. It's important that you've got the edges together. So when you put your cover over and clip it together, you've got the sides here to keep your items safely from falling out. So at that point, I'm going to choose the cover for my pocketbook. What I've done here is to take a piece of paper slightly bigger than the pages I'm going to be using. I'll open it like a bit like a birthday card. It's opened out and the cover fits over my pages, just so. You could use two separate pieces of paper or card, plain paper or coloured paper, whatever you have. I'm going to lay my pieces of paper now, my pages, into my book quite carefully. Here at the margin, in the centre, I've got all those open-ended cut pieces there. You see them? I've got them all at the side. That means when my cover is put on and I've clamped the pages together, as I open up my book, I've got my pockets there ready for use in that way. Is that all okay? So, at that stage, take your hole punch and just make double sure that you've got your pages all nicely in, in line and the open edges are in the margin and you've got them in the right position. 
And when you're happy, they're all pushed together. You can put your book into the hole punch, make sure it's centered. You can ask them to help you with this if you need to. Push the hole punch down, and you should find at that point, you've got holes all the way through all of your pages. At that point, you're gonna make sure you've got the front cover facing you, and you're gonna secure the pages together. Now to do that, you can use an elastic band, a piece of string or wool or twine, or what I've got here are two hair ties just looped together. A hair tie by itself wasn't long enough, so I put the two together like this to give me extra length to secure my pages together. I'm going to use, to do that, to hold the elastic in place, a piece of twig I got from a walk this morning. The twig's slightly longer than the front cover, but as long as it's longer than the two holes here, it's absolutely fine. You could use a piece of twig like me, a piece of stick, a pencil, or a straw. It's up to you entirely. So at this point, what I'm going to do is to use the hair ties and just show you what to do to secure the pages together so they don't fall out. So take your elastic band or elastic hair tie and poke that through one of the holes. I've got all the pages in line, so that's gone through all of those holes that are lined up. At that point, I'm going to put the stick in place Stop me pulling the elastic band through by mistake. Pull that down. And then the same thing on the other side. Just push the elastic through the other hole and then bring it round to the front and loop it over your stick. You can add more pages to your book with the elastic because it'll stretch to fit. If the elastic, like mine, is slightly too long for your book at the moment, that's fine. You can cut it. Or what I'm going to do is just do a little knot in the string, or in the elastic rather, in the elastic hair tie. Knot that together, and then it's a nice secure fixing for my pages, so they won't fall out when I open up my book. All the pages are secured in there nicely. Or if you put some items from your walk or from the garden, or even cut out some things from magazines or catalogues and put those in there. So it's over to you now to decorate your book however you'd like to. I've got a few ideas to show you and a few ideas for things to go inside the pocketbook as well. You might pick a particular colour and make each page different items of the same colour. What I've done, I showed you before, is taken a few bark rubbings and leaf rubbings from around the garden. So, also on the front cover, you can be quite adventurous. I've got here some homemade paper. I've taken some flowers and some food colouring and made some coloured homemade paper. In this one, I've got some dried leaves. I took some leaves from the garden or from my walk today put them between some sheets of newspaper to dry them out, put something heavy on top, and I've got some pressed leaves. I could spend some time finding out the names of those trees the leaves came from. In the next pocket, if I delve in, I've got some objects I found on a walk. I've got here some items from a tree I found lying on the ground. And I've got here a conker case I found that are dried out. And over here, some more dried leaves as well. So it really is up to you, whatever you can find lying around uh, on your trips outside or from around the house as well, all good things to put into your pockets. And you can make the pockets as deep or shallow as you like. I've also got here some pieces of bark that I found and some leaves on this one as well. If you don't have an elastic band or a stick to use, I've just used a pipe cleaner to fix this book in place. And here I've got the pockets inside, just like before, in the same way. I've got over here a leaf I dried out earlier. And I thought I'd show you how to do a leaf rubbing. So I've got my leaf, a piece of paper, and a wax crayon. I'm putting the paper over my leaf. 
And I'm going to just use my crayon just to rub over. This is a lot of fun. You can bring the leaves in, you can do it outside if you've got a garden to go into. And there's a leaf rubbing just done from a leaf in front of me. The same thing for some bark rubbing. Here I've got some pieces of bark I got in from outside. And again, the same idea, you can rub your wax crayon all over the bark rubbing, all over the paper, and that will give you a bark rubbing from your particular tree. For that, you haven't got to get the bark in, you can go outside into your garden, if you've got a tree growing there, and take some rubbings. If you haven't got a tree, you can always do some rubbings of the pavement around the outside, or perhaps even of some of the pots or some of the steps in your garden or around the house. But do ask someone to help you with that if you're not sure what to do. So I hope you're gonna enjoy making your own pocketbook and fill it with lots of exciting objects that you found or collected.